put your shoes on first. All too often we have students tell us that their puppy was starting to get the hang of house training, but they kept having accidents right at the door as they were trying to get ready to go outside. This is really common. So before you bring your puppy to that exterior door, put your shoes on first. With millions of views across all of our different puppy potty training videos and all kinds of comments from our YouTube audience to really understand the questions and challenges that they're having, I've decided to create the ultimate guide to puppy house training in one video. Now, if you're trying to solve a specific problem with your house training, I'll list the chapters in the description below to each element that we're going to talk about today. But I will warn you, a lot of people continue to struggle with house training because there's a step that they didn't even realize they needed and they've just missed out on it. So the big picture of what we're going to talk about today is going to be important. Now with no further ado, let's talk about the best way to potty train your puppy. I'm Ken Steep and welcome back to McCann Dogs. A lot of house training accidents are fairly predictable and to avoid your puppy having those accidents you need to be proactive. Now you've probably established some kind of time schedule so you take your puppy out every hour or every couple of hours but that schedule is going to be fairly puppy dependent and it's also going to change over the first couple of weeks that you bring your puppy home. So on top of that time schedule I want you to be proactive and take your puppy out anytime one of these five things happens. Before and after they go into their crate. Before and after a meal. After a nap before and after a play session. And anytime you just aren't sure if they need to go, that's a great time to take them out. You're going to be amazed when you realize how being proactive can make it less likely for your puppy to have an accident indoors because they just don't have to go. Now I know a lot of our viewers live in an area where they just can't take their puppy outside. They need to use a pad. And if you look through the comment section in all of our videos, you'll notice that people using puppy pads often struggle a little bit more but for the course of this video anytime I say go outside you can replace that with go to your pad because all of the exact same rules are going to apply. While you're in the process of puppy potty training supervision is without a doubt the most important thing to take into account. Great supervision will lead to great training moments with your potty training. So let's take a look at how you can use supervision in your training and why it's so important. First things first, you need to be a good dog trainer for your puppy and that means you need to have good timing. You can't fix what you don't see. So supervision of your puppy while you're trying to fix these house training issues is an absolute must. We have lots of videos on our channel that talk a little bit about house lines and why they're so important, how they can be so helpful. It's even more important when you're struggling with house training to be able to get a little bit more control of your puppy. Come on, buddy, this way. Remember, if you don't see it, you can't fix it. I want you to focus on quality time with your puppy while they're out of their crate. It's not about the quantity of time. So this means when they're out, you're focused on them, you're playing with them, you're training with them, you're snuggling with them, but you are focused on them so that the moment they start to sniff the floor in a weird spot or they maybe scratch or they do a little circle, you can mark that with an ah ah or hey before they start to go. Now this isn't necessarily going to stop your puppy midstream but it's really going to mark that moment for them. Uh, some people maybe even clap their hands really abruptly, a sharp sound that your puppy knows immediately that they're making a wrong choice. Now if your puppy does stop that's great, you can pick them up, take them outside uh, and they can quickly finish their business but if they don't, leave them in position. It's so much easier than cleaning a trail of piddle all the way out to the door. Keep in mind your puppy isn't trying to be defiant but if you've ever used an outhouse before you'll know that indoors is a much more comfortable option for doing your business and the thing that's really working against you is that puppies are going to do whatever feels good and emptying their bladder and their bowels is actually kind of rewarding. Now, if you're struggling with puppy potty training, supervision is going to apply even when you go outside. Puppies are so easily distracted. All of the sights and the smells and the sounds, even with a full bladder, they may completely forget why they're out there. So if I'm outside with my puppy on leash, I can easily redirect them away from something they get, they get distracted by. But even more importantly, I can make sure that my puppy's actually gone. That way when we get back inside, she's much less likely to have a full bladder and squat and pee right at the door. If you have a puppy who will go pee immediately after you bring them back inside, then I'm talking to you directly right now. When you come back in, you really need to watch your puppy closely. You're doing your best to teach them what to do but it's just as important to tell them what not to do. I talked a little bit about that negative verbal reprimand. So if they make a mistake and start to pee on the floor, you'll use that verbal reprimand with an ah or a hey or something to mark that moment so that they understand that this isn't the right choice. 
your puppy may never have had to hold their bladder before. So this is going to be where your direct information is going to help them really understand the rules of your home. Here in our training facility, we help more than 100,000 dog owners to overcome the most common dog training challenges. And every week here on our YouTube channel, we publish videos to help you to do the same. So if this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that we can help you to have a well-behaved four-legged family member. Are you dreading the thought of the overnight part of your puppy potty training? Well, what if I told you that you don't need to set multiple alarms, but what you do need to do is have a plan. What a lot of people don't realize is that overnight potty training actually starts earlier in the night. There's certain things that you can do in the evening, in the late evening, that's gonna set yourself up for success overnight. And that first one is gonna be sort of your evening prep. Now, one of the most important things is to make sure that your puppy goes to sleep with an empty bladder. And there's a couple things that you can do to ensure this happens. Number one is think about limiting their access to water after a certain time. Now, everybody's gonna be different depending on what they uh, time they go to bed. But for us, we stopped letting her have access to water about after 8 p.m. or so and that way we knew that she didn't have any uh, water left in her bladder when she went to the bathroom she'd be pretty empty along with water we're also going to change or limit the access to food and when we feed her now it's pretty common for me to train pretty late into the evening so when I do that I'll only give her a limited amount of food and then I try to choose to use maybe a toy reward in the late evening instead of food so that I'm not giving her a bunch of extra stuff and then we try to make sure that that um, she has a poop before we take her to her crate for the night. Let's talk a little bit about poop, dog poo specifically, and it's actually a subject I know quite a bit about because I've gotten pretty good at getting my dogs to go to the bathroom before bedtime, which means I get a nice long sleep. Now, there's a trick to getting your dog to go to the bathroom, and one of the most helpful things that you can do is get your puppy to be active. One of the things that I like to do um, later in the night with my training and using that toy is she's more energetic. I'll either play a little fetch, a little tug of war, or sometimes they'll just take her for a little romp around the outside of the uh, property just to loosen things up and she's far more likely to go to the bathroom. And often if I take her outside and she doesn't go, I find if I just walk her around for a little while before I know it, she's, uh, she's gone to the bathroom. And that way I know that throughout the night she's empty and it's very unlikely she's going to ask uh, to go out again. I have a really important question and it could change everything in terms of your overnight potty training. Do you know your puppy's potty schedule at this point. Now this is something that took us a few weeks to figure out with Euchre. One of the things that we discovered is that, I'm going to talk about poop again, but she's a double pooper. In the morning I found that I would take her outside, she'd have her normal pee, her normal poop, and I would think woohoo we're ready to start the day and within an hour or so she would be looking for a place to go to the washroom once again. And so I actually learned over time that there was certain times of day that she is much more likely to go to, go to the washroom. Um, and that allowed me to ensure that those um, times, those points had been met before we went to bed at night. It's very common for her to have to go to one more time before we go to bed. So if it's getting close to bedtime and I know she still hasn't had her, her evening poop, I'll go through some of those things on the list I mentioned earlier about, you know, doing a bit of training with her, maybe doing a bit of exercise, taking her for a walk, get those things moving so that she actually does follow her schedule, which makes overnight much easier for both of us. We've talked a lot in our previous potty training videos about common times where they do have to go. Things like coming out of their crate or after they had a big nap or after they had a lot of play. We want to take advantage of those opportunities and use it to help us make an overnight potty training plan. A lot of people think they have to set an alarm overnight and get up several times to let your puppy outside, but I'm very happy to say that you don't actually have to do that. You have an alarm system built in right here, and um, we would recommend that you keep your puppy's crate nearby where you're sleeping so that if they do stir, you can hear them and then get up and take them out. Now, with a lot of the other tips that we're going to be mentioning in this video, hopefully you're going to be able to find that even within the first couple nights, your puppy will sleep for a long time. Um, she did win for a little bit the first couple nights that she was home, but it wasn't until early in the morning that we had to get up. And I heard her stir, got up, let her out, and, and dealt with it at that point. Um, but they're going to, there's going to be a, a time when you don't want that to become the routine. Now, eventually, we pushed our six 
hour time frame to she sleeps about eight hours a night which is pretty great so the way that we did that is you know after a few days of getting up at 6 a.m. to let her go to the washroom we would then push it five or ten minutes I might let her whimper a little bit I might just bang on her crate a little bit and tell her quiet settle wait a few minutes for her to settle and then I would let her up and and take her outside to go potty um, and each day I sort of push it a bit more and I think after the second day she fell right back asleep for another hour or so so it was a pretty easy transition but it's much easier for me to feel less guilty about letting her outside if I know that before she went to bed she fully went to the bathroom she had good exercise you know I, I know that I've set her up for success so I feel less guilty about letting her out all throughout the night she learns to have a, a long good night's sleep and so do I now, if you do have to get up in the middle of the night to have your dog go potty, it's really important that when you take them out, that you make sure it's all business and no pleasure. So if you come out and your puppies are running around and being, you know, having a bit of a party, just keep the leash a little bit shorter. Just encourage them to hurry up. We often suggest teaching our puppies to go to the bathroom on command. I'll often tell her, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, and then encourage her to go from there. If she's not going within a minute or so, I'm just gonna take her back inside and put her back in her crate before we try it again but if we come out and then we do a little play and we make it a bit of a game I don't want her waking me up in the middle of the night so that we can go outside and have a, a little party together so make sure it's all business no pleasure get the job done back inside back to bed I'm talking a lot about a structure with our puppies but looking down the road a little bit there's certain things that, um, that you might not need to worry about as your puppy gets a little bit older things like restricting water throughout the night or um, you know not feeding or playing with them at a certain time of the evening as your puppy gets a little bit older they are going to learn how to self-regulate one of the ways that you're gonna know that you're ready to kind of loosen the rules a little bit is you know is your puppy successfully making it overnight every single night without asking to go outside or without having any issues um, you know are they typically doing well with their house training during the day as well do they understand to hold it or to ask you to go outside um, do they understand not to have accidents in their crate um, can they spend a long time in their crate without needing to go outside these things are all going to slowly start to come together for you and at that point you can start to decide whether you want to be a little bit more relaxed with some of those rules and structure yes good boy sometimes puppy training can feel stressful and all of the YouTube videos in the world won't help you without the right information. If you feel like you're looking for specific advice that's right for your puppy in your training situation, make sure you check out the link in the description below to our Puppy Essentials program so that you can work with the McCann Dogs instructors to find out what strategies are right for you. A common question I get is how do I teach my puppy to let me know when they need to go outside? And there's actually some cues that your puppy's probably already giving you and to really understand what those cues might be, we need to take a look at this next video. Here's a dog trainer hack. We know that after your puppy's been in their crate all night that they're gonna have to go. So here's what I want you to do. You're gonna grab your puppy's leash, you're gonna go open your puppy's crate and pick them up. Clip on their leash and then head up to the uh, exterior door that you're going to use to take your puppy outside to potty. The reason we pick the puppy up is that we don't want to risk the chance that your puppy's going to have an accident when they come out of their crate between their crate and that exterior door. So the best thing you can do is pick that puppy up so that they don't have an opportunity to make that mistake. And then you can take them up to the inside of that exterior door. Now what most people will do at this point is take their puppy directly outside, but here's the trick. At this point we want you to set the puppy down and hang on to the leash. Your puppy's really got two choices. It's either uh, have an accident on the floor, which we've talked about in previous potty training videos, you know it's not the best outcome but it gives you an opportunity to tell the puppy that that's not what you want or your puppy's gonna indicate they're gonna maybe sniff or they're going to maybe go towards the door or they're gonna look to you they're gonna look a little bit uncomfortable and that's the moment you mark with your do you want to go outside and this is the foundation for the skill that your puppy needs to come to you to indicate that they need to go outside now this isn't the kind of skill that will be learned in one session. You're going to need to plan the same routine a few mornings in a row. As well, at other times of the day, you need to be really supervising your puppy and very aware. If they start to indicate that they need to go potty and maybe those signals are sniffing or looking to you or scratching or whatever they might be, you're going to learn them in those morning sessions. If your puppy indicates they need to go outside, you need to pick them up and immediately take them out. It's beneficial to have your puppy come and find you to let you know that they need to go outside rather than them being stuck waiting at the door while you 
don't know that they need to go outside. So remember, set your puppy up to be successful by starting this first thing in the morning when you know that they need to go. At this point, I hope you're thinking to yourself, there is no way that I can supervise my puppy 100% of the time, and you're right. That's why using a crate or a limited space area is so good for a young puppy in training. It gives them a safe place to go that is just their own, and it keeps them from getting into trouble when you can't watch them. Simply having a crate and, and putting your puppy in there doesn't necessarily mean that the accidents will stop. In fact, some puppy owners have trouble with their puppy having an accident in the crate. Let's take a look at why puppies might have accidents in their crate and what you can do to stop them. We want our puppies to be comfortable in their crate, but if you're having potty training issues and your puppy keeps having accidents, it's important to do things like remove their bedding, whether it's a bed or a towel or whatever, from their crate. Puppies uh, will sometimes go pee or poop on that bedding or on that towel and then they'll sort of scrunch it up to the side so that they can still sleep comfortably. Now this won't be forever. This is just while we deal with this potty training issue. We're going to remove the bedding from the puppy's crate if they continue to have accidents. Remove other things like pee pads as well. It creates a bit of a conflicting message for puppies and we're going to show them exactly how they can uh, very quickly potty train by giving them very clear uh, boundaries. So by taking them outside for example and if you're using puppy pad training in your house. There's uh, probably lots of videos on YouTube that talk about uh, progressively moving it closer to an exterior door, for example. But let's make sure for now that all of the other things in our puppy's crate uh, have been removed if they're having problems with potty training. Next, we need to look at how much room our puppy has in their crate. Now, a lot of us will buy a crate for uh, the puppy's lifetime. We're gonna buy it big enough for them to grow into. But uh, the problem there is that when your puppy's really little, there might be too much room available for them to go have an accident in one corner and then sleep soundly or lie down and be comfortable and dry in another corner of the crate. Something that you can do is, especially for those of you who have a wire crate for your puppy, you can get a divider. Now I know there's probably some plastic crates out there that you can get a divider for, but you may need to look at doing something like creating bulk in one end of uh, your plastic puppy's crate. Make sure that you really have a good look at how much room your puppy has. They need to be able to stand up, lie down, and turn around quite comfortably in their crate. But if you're giving them too much more room than that, then they may feel like there's lots of opportunities to go pee on one side and sleep on the other. I'm going to use Hippie Shake as my demonstration dog and I want her to feel like there's a bit of a consequence if she has an accident in her crate and you can see here I pour an entire cup of water in one end of the crate and she's still able to uh, you know relax comfortably in the other end of the crate so make sure that that crate has the appropriate amount of space for your puppy especially when you're having potty training problems. Another option is going on like a buy and sell website and grabbing your crate from there really inexpensively. Now people are often selling crates because they feel like they don't need to use them anymore or maybe their puppy has grown out of it so uh, you can definitely check that out while your puppy is this size and just a quick uh, search on uh, our local buy and sell website and I found all sorts of puppy crate options we want our puppies crate to be somewhere that they can be safe and comfortable and to help us with their potty training process and we don't want to have to be supervising them when they're in there however when you're working on crate training especially if you're having potty training problems with your puppy it's a great idea that if they're in their crate and you're able to supervise them that you do keep an eye on them that you really listen for them to maybe start making noise that they might need to go outside. Now this may seem a little inconvenient, but moving your puppy's crate around to wherever you are in the living space is gonna be really helpful after your playtime or your training session or when they wanna have a rest. Moving your puppy uh, maybe beside you in the living room while you hang out in there, it's gonna allow you to hear them make noise and let you know when they need to go out. Maybe they begin to stir. Now, if your puppy just all of a sudden decides to go potty in their crate, that's also gonna allow you to capture that moment and you your voice with an oops or an ah or something, some verbal marker to let them know that that's not what you want. At that point, you can take them outside and you know praise them for going in a place that you do want them to go. But that moment uh, that you're able to catch them in the act and mark that moment is going to be really helpful if they do have an accident. We have lots of crate training videos on our YouTube channel that will help you to make your crate a safe and comfortable place for your puppy to be. I'll make sure I list a couple of the links to those videos in the description below. Did you know that you can actually teach your puppy to go? OP on command. Kale McCann has helped thousands of puppy owners to master this exact skill. Let's figure out how to teach your puppy to go pee and poop on command. The first thing that I want to talk to you about is how to actually teach your dog to go to the washroom on command. Now when you take your puppy outside, they can get very easily distracted, so it's best to keep them on a short leash and just stand still and try not to talk to them too much. Stay quiet and let them just think about their job. Once they go to the washroom, start to pair the command that you want to use with your dog. Now I use the command hurry up, that's what I feel most 
most comfortable saying in public around people. And I just say that over and over and over again as the dog starts to go to the washroom. Once they finish, then I simply just praise the dog. I don't make a big deal. I don't necessarily give them cookies or treat them, but I do use my voice to let them know I'm happy with what they've done. Another thing to consider is the best time of day to teach your dog to go to the washroom on command. I like to teach my puppies when they first get up in the morning uh, from a long sleep overnight to take them outside at that point because I know they have to go to the washroom. Um, when they go to the washroom for the first couple days, I wait until they go before I start saying my command over and over and over again. The puppy doesn't know what the word means yet, so what I have to do is pair my word with the behavior that the dog is already doing. Now after a few day go days go by, um, I may consider saying the word a few times before the dog goes and see if they start to sniff or initiate behaviors that mean that they're going to go to the washroom. If the puppy's more interested in playing and jumping around, I'm going to stop saying that command and just go silent again and wait for the puppy to go to the bathroom or show signs. And at that point, I can start repeating my word again. There's no point in giving a word if the dog doesn't know what it means. So you have to make sure the first couple days is more of a behavior and word association. One problem you might run into when teaching your dog to go to the washroom on command is that puppies often get really good at going to the bathroom on command quickly in locations that they're used to, so such as your house or places you take them on a regular basis. But there's going to be times when you have to take your puppy and make them go to the washroom in places that aren't so familiar. So maybe you're heading to a dog class or you're, you're traveling on the road for a while. And, and in my case, I fly a lot with my dogs and I have to go to a lot of different airports. And unfortunately, airports aren't always the greatest place to find areas for your dog to go to the washroom. There's been times when I've only had a very small piece of grass that they've had to go on or, or even just concrete itself and the fact that my dogs can go to the bathroom quickly when I ask them to and they're not as picky about their location it makes my 10 hour trip to Europe a lot less stressful knowing that they're uh, down below and they've relieved themselves and they're, and they're comfortable. Along with house training nipping and biting is a common challenge that puppy owners have it's because they're making a couple of really big mistakes in their training if you want to avoid making the biggest mistakes in puppy biting training click that card right Right there. On that note, I'm Ken. Happy training!